What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, we now have clarification. As I told you guys, I told you guys that more than likely, this report that came from, and this narrative that came from former lightweight, now junior welterweight, Mexican-American superstar title contender, King Ryan Ryan Garcia, after he defeated Oscar Duarte via eighth-round knockout victory in a post-fight press conference, his new well-renowned two-time trainer year, future Hall of Fame trainer, Derry James, was brought up about the changes and how did it benefit him. And Ryan Garcia, he then stated that Derry James and him or going on this ride for the remainder of his career, duration of his career. Why he was asked this is because prior to Derrick James, who's a future Hall of Famer, he was already with two Hall of Famers. He was a two-time trainer, year, well-renowned trainer, and future Hall of Famer, Eddie Reynoso. And he, after that, he parted ways. He went back to uh, somebody that was training him in the amateurs and uh, Hall of Fame trainer, well-renowned trainer, Joe Goosen. And he parted ways with him after his suffering the first loss of his career, April 22nd, Las Vegas, Nevada, T-Mobile Arena to Javante Tank Davis via seventh round knockout. He parted ways with Joe Goosen, and then he got with Derry James. And so many people are asking Ryan Garcia because he's not going to any old trainer, but he's experiencing some of the greatest trainers ever. And so everybody's asking him, how long can we expect this relationship and partnership with you and Derry James to last, to which he stated that they're going to last till the wheels fall off, and that Derry James promised him that he's his last fighter, or stated, you're my last fighter. And so he said, we are in this for the long haul. And everybody took the fact that he said, you're my last fighter, that Derry James told him, you're my last fighter, as speculation that Derry James was hinting that Ryan Garcia is the last fighter in his highly high profile stable of fighters, which includes Errol the True Spence Jr., former unified three belt welterweight world champion. It also includes former undisputed junior middleweight, still unified junior middleweight world champion Jamel Charlo. It also includes undefeated lightweight star title contender Frank the Ghost Martin. And it also includes the likes of two time unified heavyweight Olympic gold medalist British superstar boxer Anthony Joshua, right? And now himself. So it's a lot of not just fighters in his stable, but a lot of high-profile fighters, right? And there's a lot of talk that fighters are not happy with the time that they have with Derry James, the commitment from Derry James, because he has so many other obligations to these high-profile fighters. And we saw when he was training Jamel Charlo, that Jamel Charlo for quite a period of time was training with Guzman uh, for an extensive period of time. And then he decided, you know, Derry James then came back into the picture about two to three weeks out from the fight with Canelo Alvarez, the biggest fight of his career. Uh, there was talks after Errol Spence suffered his devastating loss to uh, Errol Spence, uh, Terrence Crawford in July that he needed to part ways. And there was whispers that Frank Martin wasn't happy with the split and uh, the attention that he was giving and that he was possibly looking to go back with his uh, old trainers and then original trainers. And then we see Anthony Joshua. Now Anthony Joshua is has a fight coming up in a few weeks, in about three weeks, two to three weeks, with um, another trainer in Ben Davidson, not Derrick James. And so with that brings speculation when Ryan Garcia made the statement that he stated that I'm his last fighter. People took it and stayed and meant and ran with it that he meant he's the last fighter that he has in his stable. Now other fighters. He's the last fighter. And I told you guys, I don't believe that's what Ryan Garcia meant. I believe that Ryan Garcia meant that this is the last fighter he's going to take on because he simply doesn't have time to add any more fighters to his roster. And so with that said, Derry James essentially cleared that up. And he says, 
to another fighter that offered his services to him or asked for his services, uh, Derrick James cleared it up by saying, I can't help you. I wish I could. Unfortunately, I don't have the time or the room to add any more fighters to my stable. End quote. Meaning that I can't, I don't have the room. I don't have the time. I don't have the freedom to add another fighter to my stable to train anybody to give my time to. And so with that said, this clarifies, as I stated, and I told you guys that I don't believe that's what Derry James meant by the statements he made. And I don't believe that that's what, um, I don't believe that that's what, you know, uh, Ryan Garcia was hinting at either. Uh, and Ryan Garcia was definitely in the moment. Okay. Uh, his, mo his, uh, adrenaline was high, you know, so, um, you know, he may not have clarified and it just left room because there's so many speculations about what's next for Derry James. And many people are saying that Derry James is having a bad year. Okay. Uh, Derry James is, you know, um, is, is having a bad year when it comes to, you know, um, his fighters, uh, you had Jamel Charlo lose to Canelo and he looked bad when he fought Canelo because he wasn't assertive. He got dropped in the seventh round and just didn't want to engage. Uh, he had a lackluster performance. You had Errol Spence that wasn't competitive at all against Terrence Crawford, got dropped in the second round twice in the seventh and then stopped in the ninth, uh, in a fight that was seen to be 50, 50 on paper, then got dominated. Uh, and then Frank Martin's last fight, he didn't look impressive until the later rounds where he made some adjustments, but he wasn't listening to Derry James in the corner and he made the adjustments. He got a few knockdowns and that was the difference in his fight. Or it looked like he was on the, on the verge of possibly losing that fight. Right. So, uh, with that said, he's just having a bad stretch of time. This is typical of the sport of boxing. You're going to win some, you're going to lose some. And, uh, Anthony Joshua though, he had Anthony Joshua for two fights. And Anthony Joshua, one of those fights, got a brutal knockout victory. Now, But now Anthony Joshua has left and decided that he's going to go with a completely different trainer for an important fight of his career as Anthony Joshua is going to uh, face off against Otto Valin, who is a slick southpaw that's crafty. But in waiting in the wings is a hundred-plus million-dollar fight uh, with Deontay Wilder in Dubai. And this fight... Uh, excuse me, in Saudi Arabia. And so this fight, he has Deontay Wilder will be on the undercard of this fight. And so this is an important time and an important fight uh, for, you know, um, Anthony Joshua. And for him not to have Derrick James in his corner is very eye-opening. It's extremely eye-opening. So uh, there's a lot of speculation as to what's next for Derrick James. But Again, Derrick James comes out and he clarifies. There's going to be a lot of speculation. When fighters lose in a in a manner in which uh, Errol Spence lost and he was his ace fighter and is his ace fighter, and then fighters immediately, people start to speculate that Errol Spence, more importantly, more importantly than anybody else, because Errol Spence is uh, outside of Derrick James' own boxing career. Errol Spence is who we know who Derrick James is through Errol Spence, through their relationship, through their uh, um, journey together. Uh, so immediately, we know Anthony Joshua has been with multiple trainers in his career. Uh, Jamel Charlo was with a uh, Hall of Fame, well-renowned trainer, Ronnie Shields, before he got with Derry James. Uh, and he still trains a, a, a large portion of his training camp without Derry James. Uh, we know Frank Martin was with a whole nother team before he got with Derry James, and so was Ryan Garcia. That has not been the case with Errol Spence. So when it comes to Errol Spence immediately, and he's the most accomplished fighter under Derrick James, okay? From the very beginning, Errol Spence and Derrick James started this journey together. So the accomplishments that Errol Spence has accomplished throughout his career has been attached to er uh, Derrick James. So people wonder if that long-lasting relationship has is coming to an end and do Errol Spence need to make changes for the rematch with Terrence Crawford? And so immediately people start to speculate and it runs rampant that Errol Spence and Derrick James are no longer together. But again, that's not the case. You'll see uh, Derrick James in the corner of Errol LaTrue Spence Jr. in the rematch. So there you have it. Uh, we just don't know where the date is for the rematch, point blank and period. That's the only question mark that we all have. When is the rematch going to possibly take place? 
between Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. So that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy, Blue. Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. You haven't subscribed. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV. All one word. That's all I got for y'all. I'm gone. Peace.